A rich client that doesn't understand what you do or isn't motivated is just as bad as a client that can't afford your services. So our very first workshop on how to use social media to attract high net worth clients is literally upon us. I'm very, very excited about this. This is our first B2B workshop in the UK since we've you know, come over here to set up our office over here. Um, and with that workshop, we're partnering up with Hay Hill, um, who are fantastic, they've been awesome. So this week, we're kind of doing all the logistical setup stuff. So we're at Hay Hill, working with their events team, just sorting out all the stuff for the room. breakfast, what time everybody's showing up. Um, I mean, their events team is, you know, is great. I love those guys. And it was really, really good to kind of just sit down with them and to talk through our plan of how the event's going to run. There's a real important thing when it comes to clients, right? You want a motivated client, not necessarily a rich client, right? Because if you have a rich client, whether that is your coach, your consultant, your service provider, your agency owner, the Temptation may be to always go after rich clients because you know they can afford your services, they can pay more. But a rich client that doesn't understand what you do or isn't motivated is just as bad as a client that can't afford your services because they're going to be difficult, they're going to be uneducated in what you do, they're going to be hard to deal with. Whereas you have a motivated client, a motivated client, as long as they meet your baseline criteria, right? As long as they meet the criteria of the type of person you want to work with, that client is going to get better results, they're going to be more optimistic about the stuff that you do, and they're going to be a lot better to work with. So always look for motivated clients, right? Not necessarily the richest clients. The brothers. What are your thoughts on this custom-made Brabus? So this is a random thought that I have, right? And it's just something that popped in my head as I was thinking about um, athletes and I was thinking about the most popular sport. And I was wondering, uh, if you look at the most popular sports, right, generally it's baseball and uh, football. And when I say football, I mean like European football, right, not American football. Those are the two most popular sports in terms of viewership, right? When you look at those two sports, they don't tend to have the most well-paid, like the highest paid athletes, okay? If I think back to the Forbes list and I look at all the athletes who have either broken a billion dollars in, in earnings or are very close to it, you know, Jordan, um, Mike Tyson, if you kind of, if you adjust his earnings for inflation, I think it's about a billion dollars um, or maybe even more. Floyd Merva is pretty close to a billion dollars. Um, if you look at, I think they released Canelo's earnings recently. He's up there. Uh, Conor McGregor is going to be up there pretty soon. They're all close to a billion dollars. But basketball, for as popular a sport it is, is not anywhere near the level of football, right? Boxing, as popular as boxing is, is not anywhere near the level of football. Um, you know, so, and even if you look at some of the baseball stars, some of them obviously are doing really, really well, but there's not, to my knowledge, any baseball billionaires, right? So that was just this random thought that I have. What is it about those sports that is allowing those athletes to really, really take it to the next level? Because in each of those examples, they've become more than just a sport, right? They're not just, you know, Michael Jordan transcended his sport. And, you know, I think at one point he was, his salary from Nike was almost double what he was getting paid at Chicago Bulls. Um, LeBron James is another one. You know, a lot of his uh, success now is coming, or a lot of his, um, his earnings is coming from his deals with Nike. Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, he's had a billion dollar deal with Nike. Messi has got a really phenomenal deal with Adidas as well. So. I look at these and I think, you know, this is how my business mind works, right? I look at these and I'm thinking, in terms of the world of personal branding, because we live in the era of personal brands, right? And if you remove the word personal, we just live in the era of brands. People like to buy from brands. They like to buy from um, either corporate brands or personal brands that they love. And so if we live in that era, I start to think about what is it that's allowed, you know, the Jordans of the world, the Floyd Mayweather's, what's it allowed them to transcend their sport and make so much money? Um, because there's a lot of footballers out there who are really, really good, but outside of you know Messi and Ronaldo, there's not as many who are you know hitting that half a billion dollar revenues, right? No one else is even close to a billion. And so I'm just thinking like, what is it? Is it an, are, are these footballers, are these athletes um, who play football, are they monetizing their brand the way that they should be? Because a lot of these guys have got so many fans. Um, I mean, I know Neymar's doing really, really well. You know, he's one of the most followed people on social media. Um, and so I look at these athletes and I think, are they monetizing their brands as well as they could be? I know they are monetizing their brands, but if you look at someone like Jordan, he essentially came out 
before social media, right? And he was able to, you know, parlay his brand, his personal brand into a billion dollar empire. Um, this is the random I think about.